Cannabidiol, or CBD, is a compound commonly found in the cannabis plant. That federal patent was issued to Aidan Hampson and Julius Axelrod, who were federal scientists. Axelrod won the Nobel Prize for his work on neurotransmitters. When most of us think about cannabis, we think about people getting high. So the thing in cannabis that gets you what we call high is something called THC. THC is a compound in the cannabis plant. But THC is just one of hundreds of known compounds inside the cannabis plant, and it is the only one of those compounds that makes you high. These compounds are called cannabinoids. The two most commonly found cannabinoids in cannabis are THC and another one, CBD. At first, I was actually really scared to try CBD. So I took it and I instantly felt just like very nice and I didn't feel anxious about anything. The next day I went to work and I think the CBD was still in my system a little bit because I felt super confident that day. It just started working really well for me. How could it be that one plant or one, one uh, remedy could actually help so many different things? Up until the late 1980s, it was not known how cannabis interacts with the body. It was thought that maybe it disturbed the cell membranes in the brain like alcohol does or some anesthetics do. That turned out to be wrong. So remember how we said that CBD and THC are both compounds in the cannabis plant that are called cannabinoids? Our human bodies appear to be built to require cannabis. I know that's a really over-the-top sounding statement. I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. So our bodies are full of tiny receptors that are activated by cannabinoids. What does activated mean? Well, it means that when cannabinoids come in contact with these receptors in our body, the receptors get to work on an incredibly important job, regulating many of the body's systems and maintaining or restoring something called homeostasis, which is just a fancy word for the body's natural balance. Basically, this system of receptors plays a huge part in keeping the body working properly. These receptors are everywhere in the body. Most of them are in the brain and in the nervous system, but they're everywhere. In the immune system, many of our organs, the blood, the skin, everywhere. Okay, so now we're going to tell you all of that in a little more detail. So, Raphael Meshulam is the guy who first isolated THC at the Weizmann Institute in 1964. In 1990, a team led by Lisa Matsuda discovered that the way THC works in the body was by connecting to a receptor. This receptor was later called CB1. They said, okay, this is wonderful. We have now a cannabis molecule. Now we have a receptor in the body that responds to cannabis. But does that make much evolutionary sense that we have a system in the body that is there just to react to the cannabis plant? This doesn't make a lot of physiological sense. They said, well, if there's a receptor for this, there, there must be something inside humans that triggers the receptor. And then the craziest discovery was made. Our body makes its own cannabinoids. In 1992, Lumir Hanush and Bill Devane discover the compound made by the body that activates the same receptors that THC activates. They called this new compound anandamide. Ananda in Sanskrit means bliss. As it turns out, the way that THC works and anandamide work are quite similar. A few years later, another cannabinoid-like compound produced by the body was discovered. The name it was given was not as entertaining as anandamide. It was called 2-AG. Nearly a hundred compounds have since been discovered that are produced by the body and interact with cannabis compounds, and more cannabinoid receptors have been discovered as well. So it turns out the receptors in our body aren't there just to respond to cannabis. We're producing these molecules from within. 
So, this massive system of receptors and the body's own cannabinoids was given a name. The endocannabinoid system. So endo is endogenous, from within. The endocannabinoid system is referred to as the master regulator. So it controls our body's ability to eat, sleep, rest, digest, and relax. It's regulating energy balance. It's regulating mood and emotion. The endocannabinoid system is involved in regulating the creation of new brain cells. There is a galaxy of these cannabinoid receptors throughout our entire body. The endocannabinoid system is present in every organ of our body. Name an organ, the cannabinoid receptors are there. In all of our connective tissue, in our skin. In your GI tract, in uh, the cellular level of the nerves. They're located in liver cells, they're located on pancreatic cells. In our circulatory system, in our immune system. It's pretty much everywhere. The endocannabinoid system parallels the immune system. So there really is no physiological process in our body that's not affected by the endocannabinoid system to some degree. And if that's not fascinating enough, or weird enough depending on your point of view, the endocannabinoid system is not just present in humans. This system is found throughout most animals. Almost all organisms that came out of the water have an endocannabinoid system and they're related. We recently found that hookworms contain the functioning endocannabinoid system. It's been found that truffles, mushrooms, produce endocannabinoids. Us animals and truffles? So, to sum it up, cannabis makes cannabinoids. Humans and animals make endocannabinoids. Both cannabinoids and endocannabinoids activate the exact same receptors in the body to create a state of homeostasis. The endocannabinoid system's job is to maintain the balance of all the other systems, right? So you have a bunch of other systems that do their thing, and the endocannabinoid system sits on top of all of them to make sure that they don't go out of control. There was a PTSD study that was conducted after the 9-11 attacks in, in uh, New York City. In the immediate area around the terrorist attacks, they got 50 people in a study, half of whom presented with PTSD, obviously related from the attacks. Half of them did not. Every single one of them who had PTSD had lower levels of endogenous cannabinoids.